I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. Why not? No! In this video, we're going to be talking about the six mistakes new programmers make when learning to code and how you can avoid them. Hi. I'm Joel, creator of Pixelmurb.com and this YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, then I hope you find this video helpful. And if you do, make sure to subscribe and click on that notification icon. All right, so let's get right into it. Learning to code isn't an easy task, especially in the beginning. At first, you can be very excited. You're ready to jump in head first in the code that you want to learn. You're not dipping your toes. You're getting ready to take the leap and jump in and do a cannonball. But then, out of nowhere, the obstacles start popping up left and right and your excitement quickly fades away. This is when you have to dig down deep in order to overcome any obstacles that might try to hold you back. So here are the six common mistakes that can slow you down from learning how to code. Number one, not properly preparing your operating system. If you're working with a language that requires more than just a text editor and browser, you'll need to download some software or packages to get started with that code. It doesn't matter if you're using Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Each operating system will need to be prepped properly for the language you're looking to learn. Yeah, I know, Linux and Mac OS do come with extra packages that Windows might not have out of the box. But those packages are often outdated and you're still gonna need to sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, followed by sudo apt install whatever package it is that you need for your development environment. So make sure you properly set up your developer environment and your tools you're gonna need in order to get started with code. Look at the documentation pages of the coding language you're looking to learn to make sure you configure your operating system properly. Number two, you're way too distracted. We all are. We live in a hyper-connected world. We spend more time on social media, checking email, responding to text messages, and maybe even talking on the phone if that's how you communicate with others. We spend more time on those activities than on any other activity. When we're not on social media, we're binge watching Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Apple TV+, Disney+, and regular cable if that's still a thing. Then there's life in general. We easily get sidetracked by anything that might come before us and what life has to throw in front of us. From our beloved family to our girlfriends and boyfriends, from friends to work, school, getting to and from work or school, getting sick, working out, eating, and of course sleep. The list can be more or less, but in general, we live very distracted lives. With all that, it's no wonder that learning how to code can be such a challenge. So what can you do? You gotta take back control of your time. Easier said than done, right? You gotta make a daily schedule and stick to it. You have to dedicate some time for the things you absolutely must do and then dedicate some time for the things you want to do. Most importantly, you have to dedicate time to learning how to code and you gotta stick with it. The key thing is you have to try to stop multitasking. Number three, learning from outdated tutorials. This can be one of the biggest issues you run into. Programming languages are constantly being refactored. Code libraries, frameworks, and CMSs are constantly being updated. And the various developer tools that we work with are also changing often. Basically, how it was done before might not be the best way to get it done now. So what can you do? Try to use tutorials that are recent and make sure you get familiar with the documentation pages of the languages you want to learn. Some of the documentation pages will have a change log section that will often show if there's any breaking changes or code that has been deprecated. That's probably one of the most important pages you can view. Number four, spending too much time on the basic tutorials. When you first start learning how to code, I recommend spending just enough time learning the fundamentals. Learn the basics when it comes to code syntax and how to work with the flow of code. Make sure you understand the concepts of variables, functions, arrays, operators, conditionals, loops, classes and objects, and other fundamentals of the language you're learning. Most languages have a way to debug your code. Make sure you learn how to use any debugging features for your language. 
Once you're comfortable with the basics, then it'll be time to challenge yourself by trying more complex tutorials. You might be ready before you even realize it. The beauty of developing locally in a controlled environment is you can afford to make mistakes and correct them before you go live with your program or website. Don't be that developer. I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. That's not a good thing to do. After each tutorial you take, whether it's a basic, intermediate, or advanced tutorial, try and refactor the code and make it do something different, or make it do the same thing in a different way. The goal is to truly understand the tutorial by making it your own. Quick tip. I like working in virtualized environments. It ensures that my development process is completely sandboxed from everything else that might be on my operating system. You'll be surprised how one program on your computer might impact the performance of another program. And for me, I like using VirtualBox. It's free, it's open source, and it's extremely well documented. Number five copying and pasting code that you find online without understanding how it works. There's a stigma in the development community when it comes to copying code that you find online. Some developers think it's not really coding and others think it's cheating. The reality is, Every developer has copied code at some points within their career. In my eyes, the problem really is copying the code without really fully understanding what that code is doing, how it's doing it, and how you can make it your own. In my opinion, it's one of the best things you could do in order to advance your coding skills. Find code snippets online. Make sure they're recent and up to date. Dissect the code, break it down to its most basic components. Figure out how it actually works. Then you can either use it as is, or you can completely refactor it to accomplish your goals. But make sure to always focus on security, performance, and does it accomplish what you need it to do. Number six, starting at the finish line. Ah! Let's face it. We live in an instant gratification society. We want what we want right now. We're not willing to wait for it, and sometimes we're not even willing to work for it. We love fast food, same day delivery, and we microwave everything. Often people get overconfident. They believe they can start with the most advanced tutorials when they don't even know how to properly set up a development environment. This can be one of the worst things you can do. It can destroy your confidence and your motivation when you realize how much you actually don't know. You have to respect the process. Learning anything that's actually worth learning will take time. The best shortcut in the learning process is to focus on using the best resources and not skipping steps. There's a lot of people out there that want to learn how to code, but very few will put in the work. So to recap, these are the six mistakes new programmers make when learning how to code and how you can avoid them. Number one, not properly prepping their operating system. You have to make sure your development environment is configured properly. Number two, not being 100% focused on learning to code. We live in an extremely distracted society. We have to take back control of our time. Number three, learn from outdated tutorials. Remember, over time, code changes. Our developer tools will change. So always try to use recent tutorials and get very familiar with the documentation pages of the language you want to learn. Number four, getting stuck on the basics, not leveling up. Once you have a good understanding of the basic tutorials, it's time for you to move on to the next one. Number five, copy and pasting code without fully comprehending what it does and how it does it. Take the code snippets that you find online break it down to its most basic components, refactor it, and figure out how it works. Number six, starting at the finish line. Respect the process of learning how to code. It'll take time, but in the long run, it's worth it. And remember, don't be that developer. I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. That's not a good idea. Always develop locally. This right here, this phrase, that's a big no-no. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click that notification icon so whenever I release a new video, you'll be notified. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding. Oh, and make sure you test locally, not in production.